Welcome to Inside South Florida. I'm your host, Gabrielle Arzola. So you've heard of MIA and even FLL, but did you know there is an FXE? The Fort Lauderdale Executive Airport is one of the busiest general aviation airports in the country, with more than 200,000 visitors arriving to South Florida through their facilities every year. To tell us more, we have Rufus James, the Fort Lauderdale Executive Airport Director. Hi, Rufus. Hello, Gabby. Thank you so much for being here. My pleasure. Thanks for having so, me. So please uh, enlighten us. What is FXE? I have never been there. Okay, certainly, certainly. Uh, the Fort Lauderdale Executive Airport is owned and operated by the city of Fort Lauderdale. It's located in the Uptown District, and it's about eight miles from downtown. And so it's a general aviation airport, which means there's no commercial service, so don't come looking for Southwest or <laughs> any of those types. It is truly, strictly general aviation. We have several services that are offered at the airport and other amenities, a uh, 24-hour air traffic control tower, airport rescue and firefighting that's 24-7 also, customs and border protection for those international travelers, and we also have uh, security, 24-hour security on the airport, as well as a uh, police substation. In addition to that, we have four fixed base operators. Um, I like to call them the Wawa's of airports, if you will. <laughs> but uh, they provide services such as uh, maintenance, um, customer service, uh, fuel, uh, avionics, and other services that aircraft operators typically look for when they're traveling from airport to airport. Hmm. So there's a big economic impact, I'm hearing. A lot of jobs, a lot of folks working in this. Uh, tell me, what's the impact you guys make in the community of Fort Lauderdale? Well, I'm proud to say in the last 10 years as the airport director, we went from an economic impact of $839 million annually. Oh. Wow. <laughs> uh, 5,000 jobs and a payroll of about uh, $260 million. Um, today, we're at $3.9 billion economic impact, 23,000 jobs and a payroll of about $1.2 billion. And, you know, just a fun fact, if anyone is interested, um, we are ranked number seven in the state out of 129 airports of having the greatest economic impact in the state. And I'm talking about being behind commercial service airports, not other general aviation airports. So That's as huge. a general aviation airport to rank as number seven, um, it really is huge. That is huge. Yeah. And you guys don't do just a lot of planes coming in. You also have lots of programs. Tell me about this flying school. Yeah, certainly. Uh, a few years ago, we uh, met with a gentleman named Barrington Irving. He was the youngest pilot at the time, uh, 23 years old, to circumnavigate around the globe Oof. solo. Oh, <laughs> and <laughs> wow. And he built the airplane himself that he used to do that uh, feat. And so after accomplishing that in 2007, it was, okay, what next now? What can I do? And so he started what's called the Flying Classroom. And that Flying Classroom, it's an integrative program. Uh, it covers STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math. And what he realized was that a lot of kids, young kids, have a tendency of being scared of the science, the technology, the math. Mm -hmm. And so he found a way to integrate that in the school programs by exploring throughout the world different things that kids will never get to experience. And so by bringing that into the classroom, kids are now more comfortable with handling science, technology, engineering, and math. And so it has uh, been so successful that he's taken it uh, to the high school kids as well. And every year we host him and uh, his group. Uh, approximately 700 kids come through Oh from gosh. several <laughs> elementary schools and middle schools in Broward County. Wow. And uh, we host them for the day. And actually this coming weekend, March 2nd, we'll be hosting them again with 700 plus uh, kids. That sounds like it's going to be really exciting. Yes, I'm excited about Maybe it. Maybe I can constitute as a kid to be a part of this. <laughs> Certainly. STEM is not my strong suit, I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I understand. You know, um, I, I say it's almost like the Disney World, if you will. Everybody is a kid, whether yes. you're 50 years old or six years old. Uh, we want anyone who's interested in uh, seeing what goes on in our industry and also some of those technical uh, things that go on to come and see it. So it's not just those events, but you guys have a ton of other things planned for 2024. Yes, we do. Um, in addition to that, we also do a annual 5K at the airport. Um, and with that 5K, we partner with the Trustbridge Hospice Organization and the good thing with that is all the funds that are raised 
goes to the Trustbridge Hospice Organization. And in the last four years, we've raised over $400,000, and all of that goes directly to the organization. I know most folks probably haven't heard of the Trustbridge Hospice Organization, but they're a community-based entity that provides that care to individuals tr transitioning from hospital care mm -hmm. to maybe end of life, or in some instances, uh, living at home and need that care. So mm -hmm. if you're ever driving around and you see the big truck, Trustbridge Hospice, know that they're delivering care to a resident that that is in need of having Absolutely. that care. Absolutely, and you guys are taking care of the full spectrum from the kids to uh, towards the end when adults really need it the most. So yes. for folks who want more information, where can they find you? We have our website, flyfxc.com, and lots of information that gives history of the airport, uh, some of the other initiatives that we have ongoing, and also some future plans we have in place. That's fantastic, that's really exciting. So not just an airport, but doing so much for the community. Rufus, yes. thank you so much. Thank you, Gabby. Thank you.